for this game. Do we really understand and want to be mentally tough for 40 minutes? Because if not, in this building, we will get ran out of the gym. In South Carolina, nothing easy, nothing cute, nothing finesse this year about the Gamecocks. Students are on spring break here at South Carolina, but it hasn't dampened the enthusiasm here in this building. They are rocking and ready to go for this noon tip. Florida coming off of a closer than expected game against Missouri on Wednesday in which, in which Tyree Samuel took over the double-double. Their bigs are a big part of their team. Nothing doing there for South Carolina. Again, a shuffled starting five. They'll be without Miles Studi for the third consecutive game today. Michi Johnson and Talon Cooper have been magnificent. B.J. Mack might be the guy that can get the bigs away from the basket. Here's a touch for the freshman, Colin Murray Boyles, and he is fouled on the drop. Does Florida understand that Colin Murray Boyles is left-handed and a power guy around the rim? They just shaded his right shoulder, and Colin Murray Boyles will eat that up. He's really good with both hands attacking the basket and finishing. South Carolina coming off of a last-second win Wednesday on the road at Texas A&M. They got a game-winning layup with three seconds left. <laughs> team pretty good at home, and the first bucket goes for Talon Cooper. Here are the starting five for Todd Golden's Gators. This team has been consistent with their starters, but they also have great depth, including the 6'11", Alex Condon, who comes off the bench. Time for teams or folks that have not watched South Carolina play a lot. They are outstanding at guarding theirs, guarding the ball, forcing turnovers, and pounding away on that defensive glass. And an early takeaway. Here's Michi Johnson into the paint with a dish. Murray Boyles, local kid does good. He's been red hot lately. He has not made a three-point shot this year. He's one of the most impactful guys in this league. A power player at that four position is 30 and white. Gators are still sleeping. Yeah. I, mean, I was alarmed at the very first possession when they let Colin Murray Boyles get to that left paw, but this is the strength this kid plays with. South Carolina is not overly talented, but they do have a kid in that freshman class in Colin Murray Boyles that can physically take over a game. Last six games, he's given him 16 points, seven boards, and he's shooting 69%. <laughs> Out of AC Flora High School, just down the road here in Columbia. Zachary Davis for three. That one just kicks off the rim and a chance for Florida. Lamont Paris telling us yesterday his biggest concern with the Gators, their spurt ability. But staying in front has been simple enough. It's forced three turnovers. It's so important in basketball. And Lamont Paris is a very simple scheme guy in the right areas. And... They are stars at guarding the ball, boxing off, and getting a shot. Watch the number of possessions, Tom, in this game that South Carolina will pass five or six times, only bounce it once or twice once they get into their stuff. 354th in the country in tempo. I'll tell you that most of that starts in the defensive end, but it's also their identity on this side of the floor. And a sloppy possession there collected by Micah Hanlogton. Florida team driven primarily by its backcourt of Poland and Walter Clayton Jr. Zion Poland came to the Gators from UC Riverside. His pull-up will roll home. First bucket for Florida nearly three minutes in. If you're Florida, you're going to have to make some guarded shots in this game. South Carolina, they just do not open up their hips. They square you up. They stay between you and the basket as well as anybody in this league. Another whistle, and this one going against South Carolina. B.J. Mack with an illegal screen. Tom, here's what I'm talking about. Pullen's going to have to take a hard-guarded shot here because Michi Johnson does a good job of sucking up the airspace and challenging, forcing a tough challenge, too. You've got to keep the guards from Florida under control of this game if you're South Carolina. Sam Pullen is coming off of a 21-point performance in their win against Missouri. Hit four of five from three. Walter Clayton Jr. left it short. That burst just doesn't seem to be there in the first four minutes no, from Florida today. I, I, I agree. <laughs> Deep three is no good, and a patient rebound goes out of bounds off of South Carolina. 
Talon Cooper just kind of let it go. He thought it was off of Florida. Here's Condon, first off the bench for the Gators. It's interesting that South Carolina and Florida, very, very similar in terms of they both are making eight three-point shots per game in conference play at 33, 34%. And we think of Florida as a stretch you out and fire away team and South Carolina can match them from the three-point line Florida though that front line scoring ability always a concern as well Poland working on Cooper Active South Carolina defense knocks it out of bounds with 14 on the shot clock. I'm just just Checked in a number of bounces of the ball in Florida's half-court offense compared to South Carolina's two contrasting different styles offensively strictly from a tempo standpoint Florida wants to be much quicker they're top 30 in the country and getting up and down the floor Poland from the elbow got it gonna have to make him today you're gonna have to make those tough twos that they don't love you back they flirt with you in this game you're gonna have to play with a little bit and make more than you miss Carolina two for two inside the arc to start this game. Gamecocks have missed both of their three-point attempts. Jacoby Wright has been hot from deep lately. Here's Murray Boyle. And they bring the double. He's able to find Gray. But Gray can't finish. Murray Boyle's the offensive board. Cooper for three. Gamecocks 0 for 3 from deep to start. Poland, another mid-range. Gets it back out to Clayton who played limited minutes in the Missouri game Fouled out with 14 minutes to go and he throws it away We got a tractor pull early both teams trying to get out of the mud after feeling each other out we're tied at four In a way and they're not heavy with ball screen usage It's it's pin downs. It's walkaways. It's back screens and multiple screening actions off the ball and again, they don't beat themselves is the best way to describe this team in white and Just count the number of passes in this game that South Carolina Passes more than they bounce the ball and this is one of them Gators are bringing a big double on Murray Boyles every time he gets a block touch to Kobe right Tom to my point. I, I think there was seven or eight passes in that possession Maybe two bounces of the ball very unique and hard to guard Lamont had an interesting take about what they do defensively. He said, listen, teams have, I don't know, four or five of their favorite plays. Why do they run them? They run them because they work. So sometimes, right back to back. Sometimes you're going to get beat on their best plays. It's what you do against every other play. And that attention to detail that pays off. Condon hesitated. He's a good three-point shooter, but didn't pull the trigger. It is just so difficult to get inside the teeth of this South Carolina defense. They are magnets on the ball. Here's Condon. Trying to go through it. And a late shot that comes up short. Great defense by Stephen Clark. One of the best offensive rebound teams in the country. Florida can get no second opportunity so far in this game. Gamecocks have hit back-to-back -back threes to take a six-point lead. Now Florida stepping up on the defensive end. Zachary Davis with the mid-range. You cannot go under a guy in the SEC on scholarship when he's at the 13-foot mark. Just an offensive clinic right now by the Gamecocks early. Davis has had back-to-back -back career highs. Post-touch for Condon. They dig down on him. He got Gray in the air, and Gray recovered to block it. Eight nothing Gamecock run. Jacoby right again. It looked good coming off his wrist, did it not? Yep. Florida has missed its last four opportunities. Poland got off balance, but still got the bucket, and he's going to the line. On the ball movement of South Carolina is crisp, and they're a very, very good passing team. And they get that thing moving. They get your defense and defensive rotations time and time again. It's just a matter of time until so someone is left open on that weak side, and they get that thing reversed two or three times. It's easy money, and they are always a threat to throw ahead, especially to this kid right. He just has a knack 
to find those open spots in their conversion offense. So here's Zion Poland at the free throw line, making his 97th career start today. Top, tied for third in school history at 23 consecutive double figure scoring games, going back to Nick Kalathus in 96. How clean is he with the basketball, though? Only 17 turnovers by Poland in 550 minutes of SEC play. Man, that's. That is a winning number at every level. The ball control for Florida is otherworldly when you factor in their tempo. Right and one. He's got eight early. He's looking for his ninth. Yeah, Florida's, a, uh, they are asleep defensively in this game. And that, but Wright has shown the ability to knock down three, so you come out at him. And Riley Kugel just no resistance at all as a weak side defender. And Tom, you've heard me talk about it before. You win games by guarding the ball side of the floor. You win championships by guarding the weak side of the floor. Riley Kugel that time, nowhere in the picture. The effort on the defensive end is what determines how many minutes Kugel will get. But like the rest of his teammates, a slow start on that side. Carolina shooting 55%. Tyree Samuel coming off a double-double. Florida looks slow on the defensive end and hesitant on the offensive end. No hesitation for Thomas Houck. Talented, strong, tough front line. DJ Mack back on the floor, a three-point threat. They want to use him to pull Florida's bigs from the basket. Here's his first attempt from deep. And it's ripped down by the 6-9 Hawk out of Pennsylvania. Another possession of six passes and one bounce of the ball. Google gives Florida 10 points a game. A starter last year and early this season. Great effort on the offensive glass. That can be a difference maker for Florida. Third in the country. Pulling down 39% of their misses. Well, that's that those are the mistakes that Lamont Paris has a very short leash for I mean they thrive on boxing you out and Kugel just ran down his own miss won the foot race to the ball A double now on Matt he had to fight out of it shot clocks at eight Ugasuk with the kick four on the clock now Another kick out right got to get it up and the floater is an air ball Right probably should have taken the clean three on the initial catch. Well, on Paris's team with an early lead in a SEC battle. 26.6 points a game. You saw him at his best the other night. Yeah, a 39-point game. And think about Dalton Connect, 36 points or more four times this Ooh. year. And a lot of people have already predetermined Zach Eady to be the national player of the year. I, I say hold the vote. And let this thing play out because Dalton Connect wow. has to be right there in the conversation with Zach Eady. As dominant as Eady is, this Dalton Connect kid could certainly prove himself for the next three or four weeks. It's the player of the year, not the player of November through February. Does that or, make sense? La or last year. Or last year. That's exactly right. Great finish by Tyree Samuel. Ford on a 6 nothing run right now. As lethargic as the Gators have looked at times this afternoon, they are right in the thick of things with South Carolina. Here's Talon Cooper. And now Michi Johnson with the shot clock late had to force it up. Best defensive possession by Florida so far in this game. Gators have made four of their last five. Kugel out to Howe. Better pass maybe would have gotten him a look and now Kugel with the return really good job by Kugel to drive shrink the defense kick it out And Tom once he kicked it out. He made a hard exit cut to that far corner And look at Florida. They, they took a punch earlier or two and now up one first lead of the game for the Gators They won three straight here in this building in a series of dates in 1926 when both Florida and South Carolina we're Southern Conference foe. Shot clock late again. It's in four. Now two. And a bump and a rejection. And Florida with another great defensive effort. That was all dribbling, no passing by the Gamecocks on that possession. And Florida just ate it up. 
Samuel passes out of the double to Kugel, shares it again, and here come the Gators. Thomas Houck in Florida on an 11 nothing run. And you're seeing a glimpse of why Riley Kugel is so talented, and Todd Golden continues to go with this kid. Let's him play through some defensive lapses, but man, is he explosive. There's one, but he got away with it when Michi Johnson missed the layup. Kugel dishes. Richard in the lane, another extra pass, and Samuel gets challenged into a short miss. A share from a foot away, and Samuel got it! Wow. He's going to the free throw line for a three-point play, two passes within two feet. What a punch back by Florida. Here's what I'm talking about. That inside game of Florida is so difficult to handle, and then they just pound you, Florida does, on the offensive glass. I mean, they're third in the country, Tom, right at 40% on the offensive glass. And South Carolina has got to stick with their principles and get body on body and make this a body blow game. Florida started the game struggling in the paint, but now they're two for their last three at the rim. Tyree Samuel had 28-10 against Mizzou on Wednesday night. And he's got a three-point play here. we got a women's basketball triple header for you Sunday, starting right here in this building. Number one undefeated South Carolina has won 50 consecutive home games. They get a Tennessee program in which they won five straight against all by double digits. Nothing doing on the Carolina end. Here comes Florida again. Talked with Don Staley yesterday and got a legitimate chance to go back-to-back -back in the SEC undefeated. And we met Champ. Yep. Yeah, she, she actually got her first dog after they won their first national title here. And Champ is the star of the Colonial Life Arena. Comes to work with Don every day and even sets it practice at half court. <laughs> Look at this as we take a pause in the action for Champ Staley. <laughs> Man, so many coaches this time of the year, they would do themselves well to bring a puppy to practice and calm them down just a little bit. But man, what a little soldier Champ is. Love my time getting to know Don Staley's dog yesterday. Yeah, saw Champ leaving the practice facility yesterday, just strutting yeah. its way to the door right in front of <laughs> national championship coach. Shot clock of five. Kugel yanks from deep and left it short. I'm not sure they were aware. And then a step on the end line. What a run for the Florida Gators. They've come on the road. They took that first punch and they've answered with a flurry. It's a 14 0 run for the Gators. Well, Mont Paris is very confident offensively what they're trying to do. South Carolina time they come in, they only average 68 points a game. Now, Florida, what they've done is they've started guarding their tails off in this half court, and South Carolina has been bouncing the ball too much in terms of who they really are. I expect coming out of this timeout, this ball should be popping, moving, getting back to that passing, screening of what South Carolina basketball really is. There it is. There's a back cut, but it's covered up. Murray Boyles gets stuck. Shot clock's at six. Right with five, and he's able to draw the foul. That's charged to Will Richard. He has been their offense, right? Right? A key guy, 14 points in the win against Kentucky this year. 38% from the three-point line in SEC play. Can break off and go get you one. He had the game winner against Missouri in overtime, and they're... Matchup here's right at the free throw line. Another one coming. College basketball Saturday. What a slate we have. Carolina home against NC State. Virginia travels to Durham and Saturday prime game. Sonic Blockbuster, number four, Tennessee, 14th ranked Alabama in a loaded SEC. Jimmy, you could have a six way tie for the conference title. Yeah. Yet as of today, Joe Lenardi only has seven teams in. And Tennessee is still in search of possibility of being a one seed in that NCAA tournament their, their schedule strength in front of them if they were to win there's no way you don't put Tennessee on that one seed they got four consecutive games against top 20 teams to end the regular season toughest stretch in school history yeah. and they've been playing for a while and Thomas Hawk throws in his first triple eight point Florida lead when they are good and you said it during the break Florida's good is as good as anybody out there that you're watching in college basketball right now. They're not on that line with UConn and different teams that there's one and two seeds, but they can beat those teams when they're at their best. 
Another foul on consecutive Florida possessions. That one's charged to the freshman from New Oxford, Pennsylvania, Thomas Howe. Here's what we're talking about in the SEC. Absolutely loaded. A lot of these teams will play each other, including Tennessee coming here next Wednesday. And Alabama goes to Florida on Tuesday. We can front row seat for both yeah, of them. Yeah, Tom, it, it really sets up what's going to be an absolute fist fight in Nashville at that SEC tournament. Legitimately, eight, nine teams I can make a case for. You can see in that championship game on Sunday, these two certainly are two of them. And I feel like, Jimmy, with Zachary Davis looking at another free throw, because of Carolina's defensive intensity and their tempo, they do things differently than those other five. They do, and therefore they will be a very difficult first-round opponent for somebody in that NCAA tournament. If you have not played against a grinded-out style like Carolina throws at you, it will shock you the first three or four minutes that you're on the floor with. Bad reach. First on Zachary Davis. Florida started this game just two for nine on the offensive end. Gators have now made eight of 11. Is it focus? Was it effort? Just being lethargic? What was it early for Todd Golden Squad? Uh, just not, not quite at that magic level as my college coach Eddie Sutton used to talk about all the time. But they quickly found the magic level after that first media timeout. Zion pulling with the crossover on Cooper. Fade away from 15, goes in and out. Richard is there, another offensive board. But it's blocked by Murray Boyles. Gamecocks haven't made a field goal in nearly seven minutes, but they've been fouled on three consecutive trips. That's the first on pulling. And Lamont Paris knows his guys are a little bit stuck right now in the half-court offense. So when they do get that defensive rebound, the speed of South Carolina has increased just over the last four or five minutes in this game. So Zachary Davis has two coming his way. 62% from the free throw line on this season. Tom, you asked me earlier, this game is actually being simulcast on ESPN and at the same time on the SEC network, and I got the answer for you. We do not get paid twice today. It's still just, it just counts as one game. <laughs> You already know what I'm going to ask you before I ask you. Another, <laughs> I've been around you a lot this year. <laughs> Another one coming for Davis. Coming off of a career-high 16. And we got a free-throw line. Lane violation of pulling. So another opportunity for Davis. He got his first start against Arkansas when Miles Studi missed a game. Studi, first a shoulder injury, then a knee injury. South Carolina has made its hand at the free throw line. That's kept him in this game at home. Here's Clayton. This match with Murray Boyles. Clayton gives it right back to Samuel. Try to scoop a reverse on the freshman. Shot clock late. Blocked this time. And another putback denied. Here comes Carolina looking for momentum. Cooper. Skip pass in a drive. And Carolina will keep it moving. Now Cooper again. Three ball good. It all started with the initial reverse of the basketball in transition. And from that point on, Florida was playing into a closeout on every catch of the ball. Todd Golden infuriated with a contact on the other end. Led to the run out. Run out yeah. The margin of error when you're trying to win a conference championship in the SEC and you got five other teams reaching for that same goal with only a week left in the season. Every possession matters. Every possession is magnified. Samuel That's downhill. Good action. That's really good action now, that timeout by Todd Golden. Just a little bit of traffic for South Carolina to work through, but it all ends up in that middle ball screen roll for a really fierce roll action for Tyree Sin. Foul is charged to Talon Cooper. Here's Tyree Samuel, grad student from Montreal, Quebec. Transferred in from Seton Hall. He's got six early. Boy, he's been good late. 19 points and eight rebounds over the past three games. 
And Todd Golden will let him shoot one three-point shot per game. If the first one goes in, he can shoot another. If the first one doesn't go in, get back inside and start pounding away. He put up a line in the Kentucky game that hadn't been matched for a road game against a top 10 opponent since Tim Duncan. Mm. 22 points, 13 boards, and four blocks in the overtime win at Rupp. Florida's played in a ton of close games this season, including three overtime contests. That's great action. And Michi Johnson up the curl, finishes with a layup. Yeah, they really wrap those off-ball screens at that high elbow area, Tom, as well as anybody in this league. Shoulder to shoulder, friction coming off. Offensive rebound and a putback for Florida. Thomas Hawk again, who is perfect from the floor. And, and Florida is working over a very physical front line of South Carolina. On those inside baskets, that roll action on the offensive glass, it's not easy to do. Johnson, another drive. Great pump fake. He got Hauk in the air. Good, good play-by-play -play call by you because he could have immediately gone up and probably would have got his stuff thrown. Yeah. Instead, he plays off a two with a little bit of a shot fake to get the defender off balance. Smart, high cue guard play by Michi Johnson. You put that one up in front of Hauk and it ends up on UG Street. Instead, two coming for Johnson and South Carolina can thank the free throw line for hanging in here in the second quarter of this first half. He's got three. Men's basketball coming your way Wednesday night on the SEC Network. Vandy in 16th ranked Kentucky. It's a Rupp Arena at 9 Eastern. Time I was in here at 7.30 this morning prior to South Carolina's pregame breakfast at 8 o'clock, and Michi Johnson was in here doing work since about 7.15. And he's a kid that just gets it. And he made several key, tough, rugged makes at the rim against a and &M. His dad, good friends with LeBron James. In fact, Michi yeah. was in the locker room after the NBA Finals 2018 lost to Golden State. LeBron has numerous times showed his support for offensive. Meets Whoa! Him. Blocking foul. I thought Clayton got away with a little bit of a push off. Instead, it's the first on Michi Jack, absolutely. <laughs> Send the invoice, see what happens. We're here, baby. Let's go! 46% on the offensive glass is what Florida has gotten in this game. And they third in the country at right at 40%. And Tom, South Carolina, they pride themselves on knocking you out when the ball's in the air as a defensive rebounding team. And they've got to stay with it the entire ball game against this tough Florida front line. Well, it is sizable and it is deep. They yeah. can run waves of 6'10 to 7-footers at you. They bring a double on Mack and Murray Boyles is there. What a pass by Mack. Throws a fastball from about 10 feet away. Great soft pause by Colin Murray Boyle. First lead for South Carolina since it was 14 to 12. Poland penetrates. 10 footer good. What they've made four, maybe five tough guarded twos in this game. And you've got to do it against South Carolina. You don't live by it, but against the game cost, you've got to make your fair share. Florida has been doubling the post, whether at the block or in the short corner. That's what opened it up for Murray yeah. Boyles a moment ago. Clayton cuts off the ball. Freshman with the drive. There is a double. Mack for three. Gators the other way. Clayton with the hard bounce. Nice pivot. Wow. How good was the pivot? For a freshman through contact, he didn't get sped up. He made that second pivot to get himself freed up. Really well done. Up for a second, the ballet was at the Coger Center last night. Instead of Hamilton, nice move by the 6'11 freshman from Perth, Australia. Clayton stop, pop, drop. Wow, what a huge three for his first bucket. And the Gators on a 7 0 run. If you fall asleep in Florida's conversion offense, Clayton will just dial it up. Your pickup point has to be a step or two higher than normal. A three answered from Jacoby Wright. 
He's got a dozen. Carolina is undefeated when he scores in double figures. Poland got some space. Murray boils the board. Carolina's shots seem to be coming earlier in the clock, and now a turnover. Fourth of the game for the Gamecocks. Riley Kugel short. Another offensive board. Florida is struggling at the rim in this game, but the offensive rebounds they pulled in have negated that inefficiency. Nietzsche Johnson, former Ohio State Buckeye with the rebound. Well, it may take a timeout. Yeah, I thought he would. Yes. You go back and watch him. When he's got one to use to close out a half, he'll call it, get to a play call, try to grind out this last 23 seconds on the shot clock. Start grinding away. He doesn't have that luxury right now. And Lamont Paris isn't real heavy on ball screen action. This would be a good time to set a ball screen and get a guard going downhill to try to close out this half. And DJ Mack comes up with a curl ball screen. And Wow, what a careless Great pass. Hands. Samuel tipped it loose. It turned into an advantage for Cooper. And Murray Boyles with the kick out for three. Rebounded by Tyree Samuel. Pretty much what I thought Carlo would try to do, though, Tom. They weren't going to settle for a jump shot on that possession. 11-second difference. Game clock and shot clock. Pull in. Probes and pulls it out. Blake nearly walked with it when he took that pass. And Carolina clean up this miss if there is one. Four on the shot clock. Clayton for three. Yeah, Another no big one. There's not one. How about Walter Clayton? If you are lazy and low at all off of a ball screen, he is going to fire that three. Mack has it blocked by hand locks in to end the half. What an effort by Walter Clayton Jr. Two late threes. That's the difference in his six point. Florida advantage on the road against South Carolina. Busy day in college basketball. One of point lead, another key part. And we always like to track this. That last shot before half, and Walter Clayton, with 17 seconds left, hit a huge three that may be the difference once we're done. No doubt. Now, I saw DJ Wagner throw one in right before the half Tuesday at Mississippi State. And Kentucky ends up winning at the buzzer. Those shots matter way more than we realize. And South Carolina had the perfect play drawn up coming out of half, but a turnover gives it right back to Florida. And Lamont Paris will tell you, what do we do well? We always get a shot and we keep you off the glass. Two things right now they have to tighten up in this second half. Kick out to Richard. He's off the mark with his three. And after the fight for the rebound, it will belong to South Carolina. I thought talking with Lamont yesterday was a offered great insight into his teaching by the way Shane Beamer South Carolina football coach was there sat in on film study with them and Lamont said listen if you're sitting in your geometry class in high school and you don't get the problem does it help if your teacher starts screaming at you yeah no put you in a no, shell absolutely I, it was a very much a classroom teacher pupil atmosphere yesterday and it reminded me of what I saw out of Bo Ryan in Wisconsin at Maui several years ago, and that's exactly the, the DNA and how Lamont coaches the game. 17 seasons as an assistant coach, including back-to-back -back Final Fours with Wisconsin in 14 and 15. Florida trying to take this game over in the paint. The denial on one side, Tyree Samuel, baby hook on the other. And for South Carolina, where is B.J. Mack in this game? I know he's on the floor right now, two in white. He's your leading scorer in conference play and has not scored a point in this ballgame so far. He's got to show up in his second half. This kid right here with the ball. Trying to take advantage of a mismatch. Now he gets doubled. Mack out to Cooper. Pull up three. Good. Tough shot, but a really good run behind, fill behind, violent cut by Cooper to get open. Skip pass to Richard. Good help defense from Murray Boyle. Shot clock at 12. Poland wants a screen. Samuel left open. Dribbles into an eight-footer. Those shots didn't 
go against Alabama in an overtime loss on the road, and that was the difference in another Florida close loss. Tom, the analytics against Florida, very interesting. When one of their bigs takes a 15-foot tough two, their offensive rebound percentage drops to about 20%, and there's that violent run behind Phil by Cooper. Samuel created a little bit of space. Murray Boyles didn't like it. Neither did the home crowd. Poland got a bump from Cooper. Muscles his way in and drew the foul. It's number two on Talon Cooper. Defend without fouling. Always a key in tough, tight tassels between two top 25 teams. Well, this is a real black and blue battle yeah. pulling at the free throw line. You could call it the Spurrier Bowl if it was a football game, and it kind of feels like a football game inside 15 feet. poland has got one more. Both these teams ranked inside the top 25. Both these teams very capable of getting that second weekend into the Sweet 16. I think the SEC's got a handful of teams capable of that this year. Six-point Florida advantage. Talon Cooper fourth in career assist among active players in NCAA basketball. And Mack had to go through his hands and right to Murray Boyles. Well, that's a good kind of whiff. Second on hand lock team. DJ Mack rolls out of it. His eyes get on the ball. The, the, the ball didn't surprise him. He just missed it. Whiffed. Good descriptive call by you. And so Murray boils to the free throw line. What a run for this freshman from right here in Columbia. Spent one year of high school out in Utah at Wasatch Academy. But he's now a regular starter. 14th consecutive start today. He battled mononucleosis early in the season. That had an impact on his lift and his explosiveness. But Lamont Paris saying... This kid has exceptional balance. It's natural growth for a freshman, but now he understands how to use that big body of his. When Lamont Paris got hired, he was one of the first guys to go see in the recruiting process. Wow, what a roll. Hey, Tom, that was a power roll and a finesse finish by Samuel. Very difficult to pull off. Michi Johnson with the dish. Mack got two Gators in the air and finishes. Now, B.J. Mack. Also wants to shoot threes, but he's got to get involved in this game with his big body inside. Finally, B.J. Mack puts points on the board. Another bump on a drive there. Physical Cooper with the strip, shoving at midcourt between Samuel and Murray Boyles, and the foul at the bucket, and they'll count it. Wow. This is a short track NASCAR race yeah, tonight. <laughs> If you're not bumping, you're not racing. Watch Samuel. That's a forceful roll and a finesse floater finish like you see a six-foot guard pull off. And the answer, and I felt like that contact was on the ground. Todd Golden almost lost it looking across. I spoke with Todd as he's walking off the floor. Tom, he was very happy with his guys. Got themselves up off the mat after the first four minutes. Started punching back, and to his point, he said, I think that's about as good as we've guarded all year in the first half. It has to continue in the second. Clayton contested three. Carolina trailing by three. Gamecocks have made three in a row. Here's Murray Boyles. Michi Johnson gathers and turns it over. Careless, aren't they? Carolina, careless. Poland has oh, wow. wedged into the rim, and they'll count it. Goaltending and the foul. They'll look at it. They call goaltending. We'll have a chance to review it when we step away for this timeout on the floor. Mm. See, most, most folks don't keep a car with that many miles on it, right? <laughs> Florida has not turned the ball over, Tom, in almost 10 minutes of game action. A little bit of bookkeeping. They reviewed that goaltending and confirmed it hit the backboard before the contact was made. Got him.
Johnson shares it and they back it out. That size really impacting. 7 1 hand locked and now Cooper drives on him. Has to kick it out for three. Good! Big Jacoby Wright. Big time is this kid today. Keeping South Carolina in the game. Hand locked and really good though at shutting off the rim. Understanding the wood is your friend as an interior defender. Three the other way. That one's good. Walter Clayton Jr. hit two late in the first half. Now he's got his third of the night. That's on Jacoby Wright. I mean, Jacoby Wright makes a three and then gives up a three. Just late to Clayton. Johnson with a 17th footer. That's Perry. Back and forth we go on this Saturday afternoon. Shot clock at 10. Clayton around Condon. Tried to pass it to him. It was kicked. And they'll reset the shot clock to 20. Or Clayton can get it going in a hurry, man. His ability to come off of screens. And Jacoby Wright just melts into the screen instead of fighting over Caboose and a shooter. I mean, if you're Jacoby Wright, you're guarding yourself when you're guarding a guy like Clayton. Very similar games. You know what bothers you? Do that to the guy you're guarding. Clayton from deep. Got to get him off of him. Got to get him off of him. I mean, Lamont Paris saying the same thing. I don't care if you're making it through. You're giving up back-to-back -back threes right now. Carolina, five of six, Good. second half. Gators have made each of their last three. Here's Poland downhill. A bump from Cooper. And that's the third personal on Salon Cooper. Walter Clayton is seeing a really big rim. And Jacoby Wright again, just not urgent right here. He, Backs up, his feet are on the three-point line, guarding a deep three-point shooter. Your heels have to be outside that three-point line. Very frustrating back-to-back -back defensive plays by Jacoby Wright. Zion Poland makes the first. He's sixth in the SEC at 86% from the free-throw line. Gamecocks going with a little bit more size. Cooper gets a breather and some teaching from Lamont Paris and B.J. McInners. Well, in four seasons at UC Riverside, was a 1,300 point scorer there with 77 starts and a three time Big West Conference performer. He's got the Gators up eight. H.E. Johnson goes to his left to Murray Boyles and a blocking foul charged to Florida. It's a second on Poland. I go back to what Todd Golden told his guys in the locker room before the game. If you're not ready to be mentally tough in a massive way for 40 minutes, we've got no shot in this game. And man, his kids, other than the first three or four minutes, have responded beautifully to that challenge. Here's BJ Mack. There's the double. Try to power through it. And Clayton pulls down the rebound. Um, he's a below-the-rim guy, and length really bothers him on those rim shots. Oh, what a sh Alex Condon! Came in from Casey for that jam, and it's the largest lead of the contest for Florida. Mack being below the rim sometimes can be an advantage if he's hitting his threes and yeah. get those bigs away from the basket. It hasn't been the case today. Shot clock at six. H.G. E. Johnson in off the window. One of the very rare straight line drives we've seen in this game. Trying to find some space, and we'll go to the free throw line. Florida's middle ball screen action. Very difficult to handle, Tom, because of the length that you got of rollers. 
when you got a seven footer sealing off in front of the rim and then a 6'10 guy rolling down the outside pipe. And you just got two guys with length that are putting you in a real bind and a on time, on target play call by Todd Golden, something we don't talk a lot about. Coaches got to be at their best this time of the year with their play calls and their substitutions, what they're doing with their defensive change ups on ball screen coverage. Coaches can have bad games too, and there's no time for it right now when you're trying to hang in this rugged SEC race. What about broadcasters? Are we immune? No, we're not. <laughs> our bar, our expectations are not quite as high. <laughs> Zion Pullen knocks both free throws down. Will Richard returns. And Carolina will counter with the seven-footer Josh Gray. Every coach in this league will tell you South Carolina is sweet 16 good. I remember when John Calipari went down to Florida. I think it's the opening game of SEC play, and they Kentucky won at Florida. I talked to him the next day, so I'm telling you, Florida is good enough to win this league this year. Kentucky had to come from behind and eke out a two-point win on the road at the Odom. Here's Mack for three. No advantage there today for South Carolina. If he's going to take him in March, he has to make him in March. Kugel through traffic. Back outside to Thomas House. And that's way off. Carolina trying to... Chip away this double digit deficit. Michi Johnson with a mismatch with the seven footer on him. Boom! Drilled the three. Well, he was in here at 7 15 a.m., working his tail off, getting shot ready and game ready. And it just paid. never flies in. Coach, by the way, <laughs> his serious record. He's first class private jet all the time, right? Yeah, well, unless he's got a wagon wheel rolling. Oh, nice. Nice. I got a hit song for him if I just get a if I just get, <laughs> just get a minute with him. I got a hit song for Darius Rucker. Yeah. Well, you got something. <laughs> Clayton left his feet, still able to get it to Condon, and then a foul inside on Josh Gray, which is his second in the South Carolina big. He spent all that money on the end. Only one, two. Make him do something off the bounce. Remaining 11:28 in this game. 12 points on four of six from deep. Here's Alex Condon, freshman from Perth, Australia, at the free throw line. His dad, Damien, a great footy player, and his mom, Leah, on the Australian national swim team. Condon played at NBA Global Academy in Australia before coming to Gainesville. He's got six now. He was a top prospect in Aussie rules football, trained with their national team. He's got Florida with a comfortable lead in what has turned into a quiet arena this afternoon. Here's Gray working on Condon. And he fouled him. Josh Gray's first bucket, much needed for Carolina. He'll go to the free throw line. It's going to happen some. If you're 40, you just have to play through it. This becomes a chest match. C H E S T. That contact <laughs> right there into the chest knocks Condon back a little bit. I love teams that come out of a timeout and they pound that thing inside, sending a message. Gray just 47% at the free throw line. Senior from Brooklyn trying to bridge this gap. It's now only six. And Colin Murray boils. A fantastic freshman return to the floor for the Cox. And you expect the Colonial Life Arena to rise up right now. They appreciate the defense of this squad. Can they get back-to-back -back shutouts? First look is zone from Carolina in this one. They go 1-3-1. One, one. Denied on the wing. And a Carolina takeaway. And a mid-court bump from Clayton. And that is his third. It was a game of chess on the replay. C-H-E-S-T. Now a game of chess. For Lamont Paris to change the defense up a little bit. Florida trying to make a lazy habit pass to reverse the ball, and then the contact occurs. There's been a lot of contact in the middle yeah. third of this floor on transition yeah. throughout the entire game. Tom, I love fan bases that understand the game and appreciate how their team plays, and this fan base rises up when South Carolina's on defense. Wright has it blocked. By the way, that... Takeaway for South Carolina resulted in Florida's first turnover in 25 minutes. 
Florida really good with their bigs, rotating over. Todd Golden always has a 6'10", a 6'11", a 7-footer protecting that rim, sometimes multiple. This is one of his better, Golden's better shooting lineups on the floor with Hauk at the four. Right for three on the inbounds. And into the hands of Thomas Hauk and the Gators. Here's Poland. Poland probes, not a Condit. Back to Condit. Hauk extra pass. Poland whips it into the corner. Four on the shot clock. Riley Kugel. A neck to pass and he threw it away. Back to back turnovers for Florida. A great defense by South Carolina. A little meet and greet on the, as a guy rolled out of the ball screen. They put body on body, clamped it off. They were tight as the ball was reversed. They were there on the catch. I'm a little surprised Kugel didn't shoot. Yeah, I, that. I agree. This little lack of awareness, maybe where the shot clock was, didn't handle the pressure well. Feels like a really big trip right now for South Carolina. They've held Florida without a field goal in the last three minutes plus. Davis dumps it in to Murray Boyle. Shot clock at five. Power move. And with the left, his strong hand, he'll go to the line. He has gone to his left on that left block catch every time he's wanted to in this game. Florida ran a double in the first half. They've gone away from that here. They have, but even, even when he gets behind the backboard, he's such a good physical athlete. He can work his way out from behind the backboard, get the ball in the glass, and draw contact. Murray Boyles, 65% from the strike. One more coming. College basketball Saturday rolls on. North Carolina has won five straight against their rivals in Raleigh. That one's in Chapel Hill. Then Armando Baycott leads the ACC with... 14 double doubles, third in history behind Tim Duncan and Ralph Sampson. And finally, fourth ranked Tennessee and number 14 Alabama tonight in a primetime matchup. Yeah, the winner of that one will be in sole possession in the first place in the SEC. To my point about the crowd defensively. Zone look again. Kugel trapped in the corner. And it's taken away. Here comes Cooper. And now Davis. And it's blocked away. Will Richard, the eraser. Florida the other way with nine to play. Kugel spins and banks it in. An incredible recovery for Florida. And a timeout for the Gators. What a massive 20 seconds by the Florida Gators. They got the life trapped out of them on the far side. Kugel did. They really got things rolling. And included in a four-game win streak was overtime wins against both Georgia and on the road at Rupp Arena. Davis with a long pass inside to Gray, who shares it to Davis. Pardon me to Jacoby Wright. Gray cleans up, and he got fouled on a touch from behind. It's a third from Micah Hanlock. Too. Josh Gray has been very valuable the last couple of minutes. He's a big, big body kid. Has not started once in conference play. Only gets about 11 minutes. But a really good job of finding that backside. Man, you can't get a cleaner look than that. But Gray not only facilitates with a pass, but stays on that weak side to clean up the miss. Talking to Lamont Paris earlier this season about Josh Gray, the seven-foot transfer from LSU. He said, we need him to contribute and make free throws. He's a poor free throw shooter. 47% in conference play. And you need every one of them right now if you're the Gamecocks. Probably take one out of two from him if you're Lamont Paris. And the crowd's been roaring again. They love this end of the floor. A kick by Davis. Where does Florida need to go against this 1 3 1? You got to get it below the free throw line extended. And Todd Golden's guys have not looked good against it yet. I believe this is the fourth possession. The previous three resulted in a stop or a turnover. You got to get into a two guard front, Tom, and get the ball below the free throw line extended. Three straight turnovers against the 1 3 1. 
There you go. You got it below. Now something good should shape up out of it. The defense by Gray inside and hand locked and shot clock of five. Three ball, no. And Wright lets it trickle out of bounds. South Carolina basketball down five. Lamont Paris probably going to stay with that 1 3 1 again. Florida has not scored against it. They got the ball below the free throw line extended one time, but that was it. And now he goes to slice chin. Again, all of his play calls are quick hitters. If it's not there, they start grinding away with their passing game. When does he run 23 skidoo? <laughs> <laughs> There's Murray Boyles fouled inside by hand locked in, and that is suddenly the fourth on the Florida big. You like 23 skidoo? If it works, run it. Correction, the foul on Samuel. Half time, they have not gotten one. We played 12 minutes in the second half. That's Lamont Paris sending a message to his guys at halftime saying, are we going to man up and be who we are as a team or not? And, man, have they answered that part of the game. Murray Boyles at the free throw line. Lamont Paris knows what it's like to win in the postseason. He catapulted from the Southern Conference to the SEC with a last-second buzzer beater a few years ago in the SoCon tournament. And now with eight minutes of play in this one, it's a one-possession game. I love what he said yesterday. A lot of programs talk about culture. We live culture. Now, these kids are fighters. They were picked dead last in, S in the SEC. 14 out of 14. They're battling for a regular season title. Looking for their second in school history in the SEC. Another near turnover. Shot clock's a five against that zone. Here's Pullen. Got a key screen. And oh. he saved it. Wow, Zion Pullen saves the possession and maybe the game. How big was that? You just a guy absolutely making a play where there's no play to be made. There have been about five monster possessions that could dictate the end of this game throughout the second half. There is the fourth on hand Lockton. Yeah, the rundown of the ball by Pola, and then he immediately gets his eyes on the shot clock. When he gets secure, watch his eyes. Where am I? Oh, I got four. That means I got four dribbles into a shot. A good job by hand Lockton to step out with some awareness or free him up with a little bit of a middle ball screen a big shot and a big screen by hand locked him. he's got to sit out now with four you mentioned it earlier that florida was able to withstand that first flurry of punches from south carolina and think about the individual possessions and plays in which they've done the same the trap and the turnover from kugel yeah. and then got it back after a great defensive effort and hit a big bucket and then the near shot clock violation just a second ago one more coming for Gray. He used every bit of the rim for that one. If he makes two out of two, that is money for South Carolina. He's below 50% on the year. Mm. Keeping up with his average. Five-point Florida lead. The ball's got to get reversed. It's got to get Tom below that free-throw line extended. There it is. Force it back down there again. You can't play catch around the perimeter. This zone has given Florida fits. Corralled by Murray Boyles. Here comes Carolina. Behind Michi Johnson. Carolina hasn't made a bucket in four and a half minutes. Johnson got the foul. He identified that early in the possession. Second on Samuel. Tom going back to South Carolina being picked 14th at the SEC media days Lamont Paris pulled me aside He said Jimmy really like I said coach. I didn't have a vote. He said I know but like are we that bad? I said I don't think so like I know your personnel you told me about him He went right back to his guys and said hey they picked you 14th out of 14th and here's why you get picked dead last That's because everyone thinks we got bad players or we've got a bad coach and I know who I am as a coach, so the little bit that is on you, man, they have they have carried that chip the entire time, and I love that about this team. They listen to that message, and the listening is what he says is the best quality of this squad. But he's able to coach him. Another one for Michi Johnson. He's got 14 right at his season average. Will Richard returns. Condon takes a seat. Florida get a little bit smaller now. 
And the depth of Florida, though, those bigs between Condon, Tyree Samuel, Hanlock, and Howe continue to pound away. Stay with the 1 3 1 if you're South Carolina. It has been really good to you. Gators have added a corner shooter. Another kick for Davis. Yeah, can you get it down to Will Richard, who has a better stroke for his career than Riley Kugel? So far this year, Wick Richard has not shot it great. Kugel was just in Samuel's ear. Corner three, short. Carolina will push it up to Zachary Davis. That's how he's like 29% this year is Will Richard. Runner for Murray Boyle. What a play for the first year freshman. Two point Carolina deficit. Handoff blown up, stolen by Davis. Three on two. Beachy Johnson from deep. Murray Boyles has it blocked. And they get Kugel. A great job by Zachary Davis to keep the ball alive. And Florida has to foul. And Colin Murray Boyles, Lamont Paris told us yesterday, he's the one guy that I've got physically to just go make a play at the SEC level. And, and Florida just has not found a rhythm at all against that 1-3-1. The tap right there by Zach Davis keeps it alive, and CMB gets to the free throw line because of it. Another one coming for Colin Murray Boyles. At his first start of the season, January 13th, in a game against Missouri. Lamont Paris said he was our best player in the preseason. Then he got sick with Mono, didn't play six games. Took him a while to get that explosiveness back. It is there, and it is there in a big way, and we are tied at 63. Four turnovers against this 1 3 1 for Florida. And another kick, Zachary Davis might be playing World Cup soccer this summer. That is his third kick at the top of the zone to go with the steal. He is active and long. Well, you got a 6'10 guy up top that's got a long wingspan. He has great anticipation on disrupting passes. The 1 3 run right now has Florida rattled, and the crowd has Florida rattled. Google wanted the lob. They didn't go for it. Stolen again by Davis. Talon Cooper pulls it out. Stay aggressive right now if you're South Carolina, right? You got the mojo working. Johnson battling his way inside. Wow. Carolina in front. It's Michi Johnson, their first lead since 345, the first half. Todd Goldman trying to get to the under four media timeout. He's got two to use, but he doesn't want to use it right now, knowing it's a tight game down the stretch. A reach in oh, by Davis, wow. one of the lone mistakes that Carolina has made defensively. Lamont Paris told Michi Johnson, go, make a play. Let him hang and go, and this is exactly what he does, man. He wins the battle for the SEC logo, gets to the left side. Shot selection time is determined by time, score, and momentum. South Carolina needs to stay aggressive. Now the floater and the finesse from Samuel. You said let him hang him up. Parents wants his guys to play loose yes. and free. The second one of those finesse floaters Samuel has hit the second half. I mean, it's such a hard shot for a big, powerful kid to make. And it's a, like a guard floater. Cooper cut off. Now they leave him alone, and he buries the three-pointer. His third three, Carolina back in front. You've got to screen Zachary Davis and get him off the ball. You can't let 12 continue to completely disrupt what you're trying to do offensively. Wow, Clayton with three. What an answer by Clayton. The fill behind. Tom, what a game. Time after time in this league has delivered all season long. Ranked teams fighting for their life. And these two trying to stake their claim as the SEC's best. In a fight for the regular season title with one week to play. Johnson, two ball, good. He's got 18. Carolina leads by a deuce.
Poland penetrates and turns it over. Three on one. Cooper blocked! And the recovery is good. The effort is wasted defensively because it's cleaned up by Michi Johnson. Let him eat. For Florida, Jimmy LSU did the same thing in Gainesville. They scored 46 in the second half, and they shut Florida down with the zone. Gators were lucky to win that one. And interesting, Lamont Paris comes out of the timeout showing man-to-man, -man, expecting Todd Golden to spend the entire timeout, how we're going to attack the 1-3-1. Change it up just a little bit, and we'll see what happens in the next possession. Cooper with the bump commits his fourth personal. By the way, that last timeout was initiated by Todd Austin on a player injury timeout. When Talon Cooper was down on the floor, we understand that Cooper is just fine, and he's back on the court. Just the 16 foul, so the next one, Florida will be in the bonus as well to finish this game off. Man, you got to be physical right here and not give up one at the rim. A uh, takeaway against the man, and Murray Boyles ends up with it. What a great defensive effort. Yeah. And Amici Johnson had something to say to the Florida bench. Now just give it to me. Eighth steal of the game for this South Carolina defense. Seven turnovers in the second half by Florida is a big, big number when South Carolina's only turned it over twice. Shot clock's at four. Mack lets it fly. Murray Boyles kept it alive. And a timeout asked for across the inline. It will be Florida basketball. Timeout wasn't granted because Cooper was bobbling it. How about the steel zone? Man, doesn't matter. Yeah, well, South Carolina is very aggressive right here. You're you're weak with that basketball, and Michi Johnson just eats it up. And that or that's uh, Cooper, I believe. But either we either, either way, Florida, you've got to own your spot in this game offensively right now. Man zone defense, it doesn't matter. I like screening the top right now, Tommy. You gotta knock Zach Davis out of the play. Results in a corner three from yes. Kugel. He, you know, he drew that up in the last time out, but couldn't get to it yes. for two possessions. But to my point, you screen the top of that 1-3-1. One, one. Now you got numbers coming downhill. Really well done and a big shot out of the corner. 140 to play, one point game. Murray Boyles with his first career double-double today. Johnson into the paint. Got it! There have been a lot of tough twos in this game that you got to take and make. Man, what a game again in the SEC on Saturday. Cohen kicks it out. A Clayton three is good. And we are tied at 74. 6-3 of the game for Walter Clayton Jr. Back-to-back -back possessions. Todd Golden screens 12 in white. Gets the guard advantage. Makes the defense shrink. And the fill behind three. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Freshman Murray Boyles. 10 on the shot clock. Tie game. 5 on the shot clock. Michi Johnson! <laughs> Time out. South Carolina. Gamecocks have a 3-point lead. And Michi Johnson. Right now for Florida to work with. Keep Florida off the offensive glass of the third best offensive rebound team in the country. Gators have hit 10 threes. They out for the two and are denied at the rim. And then a foul from Tyree Samuel, his third. And they did what they had to do, South Carolina. They, they forced a pretty tough two and they cleaned up the miss. Florida just not able to do damage on the offensive glass in this second half. Pulling gets by, right opens this up, his hips up a little, but Colin Murray Boyle just hangs in there, doesn't come over and get attracted to the ball too much so he can clean up that weak side rebound. And Jimmy, to your point that you made earlier, in fact, early in the half, Florida is still without an offensive rebound here in the second half. Yeah. That is unconscionable for a team that really leans on that. Murray Boyles has one more. Tom, it's a testament to the strength, the character, the belief in South Carolina and Lamont Paris in terms of how they are supposed to play the game.
Murray Boyles has been money. He's got 15, his first career double-double, two-possession game. Florida will use a quick timeout. 29.7 seconds remaining in regulation, down five. It's a Gators team that has shot the, well, the ball well from deep. 10 of 20 see in Bama tonight. Winner of that one will have the advantage with one week to play. South Carolina picked dead last. Dead last in this league. Ball into Samuel, gets it right back. They want to get something quick. Here's Clayton for three. Rebounded by Florida. First offensive rebound of the half, but it's kicked back to Carolina, and the shot clock is off with 21 seconds remaining. That South Carolina defense has tightened up in the second 20 minutes. The 1-3-1, one, one, and out by a foul call. Be strong with the ball. Eat the ball. E-A-T. Eat the ball as you come to it as a receiver. Halk is on the floor to offer a foul. They beat it by pushing ahead to Davis. And Murray Boyles stepped on the in line, turned it over with 18 and a half left, and he may be hurt. But you see the freshman up to his feet. Yeah, why right now if you're Zachary Davis? I mean, the, the, the possession of the ball and the clock is the most important thing, and you've left the door open. 10 of 22 from deep for Florida, trailing by five. Kugel in the far corner. Clayton has a quick release. He lost it on the crossover, but they get Murray Boyles for the foul. Gators still have life. Florida goes pistol action a little bit on the side, and I, I don't see the contact there. Colin Murray Boyles, if he reached, I'm not sure that he got it, but... Boy, these are two big free throws now to keep pressure on South Carolina to close it out. Ninth in the league at 84% on the season. And Walter Clayton Jr. Now one or two from the line today. This to make it a one possession game. South Carolina has a timeout if they get hung up and can't get the ball in. And everybody has to know it. Get organized. Don't rush. Good job by Cooper to let his guys get organized. Now the press break is on. They get it in immediately, and a quick whistle will send Jacoby right to the free throw line. Tom, I, I want to go back how smart that was by Cooper to let the ball bounce, not get in a rush, don't put the five-second count on early, let his guys get organized with a press breaker. What a high IQ, small thing in basketball that 55 in white just did. We'll get you to Tucson for Oregon and Arizona as soon as we finish here. And that's huge, a four-point lead with 12.4. Only six teams in the country, top 20 in both offensive and defensive efficiency. Arizona is one of them coming up next. Right goes one of two. Gators down four. Carolina can't foul. Clayton wants to shoot the three. Got Murray Boyles in the air. And then he didn't throw the whistle. He got the block. South Carolina will try to milk it away with 2.1 remaining. Dangerous, dangerous defensive play by Colin Murray Boyles. But man, what a second half fight back and comeback by the Gamecocks. Tom, the 1 3 1 changed the game. And Florida took him too long to adjust to it. To get that ball below the free throw line and start screening the top of it, they will learn from it going forward. And South Carolina picked 14th out of 14. On the verge of being right there at the top of the SEC. Just stay on the ground if you're Colin Murray Boyles. That was so close to being a possible foul on a three-point shooter. Davis splashes it down. It's a six-point lead with two to play. Kugel will float it up there and find nothing. And South Carolina, another ranked win here at home. In 82 to 76 final, they are down 10 in the second half. The zone turned this entire.